Hi, everyone, and welcome to a brand new lesson. As the owner of my company, Stealthy Wood, I juggle many responsibilities, and approving purchases is one of them. As Stealthy Wood grows, manual processes like recording everything on paper or in Excel are too slow. They reduce our ability to work efficiently. Automating tasks with the Purchase app can help us greatly as everything will be done in just a few clicks. The implementation of a purchasing policy will also help us create budgets and keep an eye on our cash flow. And as we will keep track of everything, we will be able to do our reports on time with accuracy. Great, isn't it? But we won't be the only ones to benefit from this. Our suppliers will also see the advantage, giving them the possibility to deliver and track products easily. Doing so, they will verify our orders and assemble our goods quickly, making us save time and keep operations running efficiently. Wonderful. So let's see how we can make this happen in Stealthy Woods database. All right, here I am on my database. So let's go ahead and jump to the purchase application. When I go to the purchase app, I'm immediately going to be able to create a request for quotation, which is what we're going to do right now. But if for some reason I'm not on this page or I'm somewhere else in the app, I can always go to purchase, request for quotation, and I will see the same thing. So let's go ahead and create the request for quotation by clicking on the create button. All right, so request for quotation for short is RFQ, in case you hear me saying that. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is add our vendor. So let's say Azure Interior, and then we can add our product. Okay, so let's go ahead and say Office Lamp. I'm going to purchase three of this item. Now, I already have a unit price of $15 here, and that's because I've purchased this item from the vendor previously. All right, if I've never purchased um, a product from the vendor that I'm creating the request for quotation for, uh, this unit price will automatically be zero, and you will need to add it manually. You can also configure the price on the product template related to the specific vendor. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this. Now I have the possibility to send it by email. If I do, then the stage will move from RFQ to RFQ sent. If I don't, and I simply click on confirm order, which I'll do right now, it will go directly from RFQ to purchase order. Okay, so let's say the uh, request for quotation was approved by the vendor, it's now a purchase order, and they've delivered the products to our warehouse. Let's go ahead and receive the products by clicking on the receive products button. Okay, so we're gonna have that receipt right here. I see an initial demand of three and done zero. Let's go ahead and validate this, even though it says zero, because Odoo will automatically apply the reserved quantities as the done quantity. Okay, so in this case, the reserved quantity is the initial demand. Okay, so three items. If I click on apply, the initial demand will be the same as done. So three and three. All right, we also see that status, status change at the top, and if we ever need to access this again from the purchase order, we can do so simply by clicking on this button. Now, of course, there are also some things that we can do between the RFQ and when the products are received, such as some quality checks, but we're going to talk about that in another video. But for this video, I want to be sure that I add some additional security measures. So let's say, for example, when one of my users uh, creates an RFQ, if the total for that RFQ is above a certain dollar amount, I want to be sure that they have my approval first. All right, so what I'm going to do is go to configuration settings, and I'm going to activate this option, purchase order approval. Okay, so I've already activated this, and as you can see, I set the minimum amount as 250. So if one of my users creates an RFQ that it has a total of 250 or higher, they're going to... Um, need my approval before it can be converted to a purchase order, into a purchase order. All right, we're also going to activate this option warnings so that we can get warnings for our products or vendors. And I'm also going to show you how that works. So if you need to, go ahead and select these options and be sure you click on save before moving forward. Now to see this in action, we're going to log out of my page here. And we're going to log in as one of my users. Okay, so let's go ahead and log in as al at example.com. Add the secret password, which I think I wrote incorrectly there. Okay, there we go. We're going to log in go straight to the purchase application and create an RFQ. Okay, and again, this user is not a manager of the purchase application. They are just a user. Okay, so they only have the user access rights. We're going to add the vendor. 
But actually what we're gonna do with the vendor as well is we're gonna pop open their contact template here. We're gonna go to internal notes. Okay, and then we're gonna add a warning on the purchase order. So we're gonna go ahead and select, instead of no message, warning here, and add a little message. We're gonna say um, no delivery after 5 p.m. on weekends. Okay, and then we can save this. And we get that pop up immediately. And just to show you this again, we're gonna discard, create that RFQ, add the vendor, and boom, we get that pop-up. So if there's some inform important information that you need to share with all of your users for this particular vendor, and we can also do this on products as well, it's gonna pop up immediately and everyone will be aware. Okay, so now let's add our office and lamps again. This time we're gonna add 20 of this item. Okay, we see that the total is above $250. So once I click on confirm order, it's going to move from RFQ to to approve. Okay, so it doesn't move to purchase order immediately. It's to approve. So it needs a manager's approval. So let's go ahead and log back in as the manager. Okay, we're going to log in. We're going to go back to the purchase application. All right, and from here, I'm going to see all of the RFQs. And on the far right, I have the status. Okay, so I see those that are converted to purchase orders, those that are still just RFQs, and those that need to be approved. Okay, so let's go ahead and select this one that needs to be approved, created by our user, Adrian. Okay, so we're looking at this now. I can approve this simply and easily by one click of a button. So let's approve the order, then it's converted to a purchase order. We see that status change at the top. All right, and then we can go ahead and receive the item. So let's do that right now. All right, we see the initial demand was 20. But let's go ahead and say that we only received 15. So even though we ordered 20, maybe they didn't have um, 20 on hand for us and they were only able to deliver 15. Okay, so what we can do is when we click on save and validate, we'll have the option to create a back order saying that um, even though we didn't receive the entire order, we would still like to receive the last five items later. So let's go ahead and create another purchase order for that. Or we can say no back order, we'll just take the 15, pay for them, and that will be it. Forget about the last five. All right, so in this case, we're not gonna have a back order. So we're gonna click no back order, okay? So we have initial demand of 15 now and 15 are done. So that automatically changed for me. When we go back to the purchase order, we know that we received the products. Okay, so we have um, all of this information right here, received quantity 15. Okay, so then we can go ahead and create a bill for the received quantity. So let's click on this button, create bill. And we like to keep this process as simple as possible because of course it's important to have a good relationship between you and your vendors, okay? So having the ability to create the bill right away as soon as you receive the products from the same app is so convenient, all right? And everything is automatically populated for us. So even though we did initially order 15, I mean, sorry, 20 items, we only received 15. So this bill will only be for 15 items. So Odoo recognizes that, all right? So we can go ahead and save this, validate, register the payment, okay? And we see that status. the status is now paid. We see the payment here. It's reconciled with this vendor bill. Now let's go back to the purchase order by following the breadcrumbs. Okay, and we are able to see uh, that we only paid for 15 items, okay? And we, because we have the build quantity here, which is 15, but we initially ordered 20. So we ordered 20, we received 15, we um, paid for a bill that included the 15 items, okay? And if we wanna see everything else, we have to go to the top right, we can see our vendor bills and the receipts right here, okay? So this one that's canceled here is for, that, for those last five items, which we didn't want to receive. So we didn't need to create this back order um, and approve it and receive the items later on, so it was just canceled. So that's the whole flow. As you can see, it's super easy. Um, it's super convenient uh, for you, for your users, for your vendors. And that's all. Thank you for watching.